Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight. Uh, thinking about going to go do a Kermit cam in the P-51D. What do you think, huh? Anyway, uh, this airplane, that kind of holds a special place in my heart here. Uh, it was my second collectible airplane. The first one I bought was an AT-6 to basically learn how to fly a P-51. I didn't have a specific interest in getting an AT-6 other than learning how to fly. My goal was a P-51. One of the coolest days of my life was taxiing into a ramp full of my friends in this airplane when I was 25 years old. Let me tell you, that was a pretty cool day. I still remember that. I uh, threw my bags out of the back and I started giving rides. I've been sharing my passion and good fortune ever since. So anyway, this particular airplane is painted up in the colors of uh, Major George Pretty. Uh, George back there on the canopy. Uh, he was the highest scoring P-51 ace in World War II. Uh, this was his uh, third airplane. Unfortunately, he had a uh, Cripsomite of the fourth. And on Christmas Day, I think, in 1944, during the Battle of the Bulge, uh, he was chasing an enemy airplane at low level uh, over American troops. The American troops got uh, word that there was uh, two enemy airplanes headed their way. They missed the first one, and they got the second. So, unfortunately, that was the end of George. That's all his kills up there. Um, and in this paint job, not this airplane, the original airplane doesn't exist, but uh, in this uh, paint job airplane, I think on one mission, he had been up, uh, you know, doing a little bit of gambling and a lot of drinking, was not feeling very well the next day, went on a really long mission. He was like, uh, you know, really not feeling well. It was a long mission deep into enemy territory. And I think in about six minutes or 10 minutes, he shot down like five or six airplanes. And uh, anyway, it was an amazing story. He came out, walked out there in the wing, and I think he threw up when he got back. So anyway, hopefully that won't happen to me today. So uh, it was kind of interesting too, uh, this was some of his original crew, and uh, there was uh, one time when this Red McVeigh guy, he was one of his uh, uh, mechanics, he came down, I gave him a ride in the back of the airplane. Now, how cool is that? So, that was pretty cool. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a walk around. And uh, so, I usually start about here. This is where the gun camera was. You know, it's got a little thing that closes up there. But there's a 16 millimeter camera back there that you can actually access through this little port right here and change the uh the, the the film out and stuff and it it helped for you know determining if somebody had shot somebody down or something like that but it was also used as a uh for intelligence because if you were in a dog fight you're fighting around man you were just looking to shoot at somebody or save your butt or whatever and what would happen is the intelligence people would down uh, you know basically take these out when they got back uh, from their mission they would look at them and they could see things that the pilot couldn't in his frantic pace see like maybe some new german airplane like a messerschmitt 262 or something like that and go oh what's that you know so anyway so basically up here uh in the left wheel while we're looking at uh you know just make sure there's no leaks stuff like that these are coolant tubes um uh, hydraulic rams stuff like that this is one of the landing lights to just make sure everything's up the snuff there's the gear lock mechanism there the landing gear is hydraulic uh, we're looking down here to make sure you know there's no brake fluid leaking these are disc uh, uh, hydraulic brakes that all looks good you know just checking out the condition of the tires um, of course here's the three machine guns uh, there's one that's recessed and I'll show you a little bit later how one why those are that way um, these are the drop tank shackles that you could put uh, up to 110 gallon uh, drop tanks which is basically 255 gallon drums of fuel on each side or you could put up to a 550 pound uh, bomb this is where you actually jack the airplane there's a little thing that goes in there and you put the jack there and you jack up the airplane when you do the gear swings so we're just making sure you know the leading edges look all good there's no scratches dings somebody bumped into something wing tip here is made of uh, much softer metal so i want to check that out ailerons trim tabs a little bit of a servo tab there if you notice that when the aileron goes up the trim tab goes down well that acts as a bit of a leverage to lighten the controls slightly but it also is into the uh, it's coordinated into the system for trimming the ailerons as well flaps it's a five position uh, flap here that I'll show uh, the guys basically just filled the fuel tank so we want to check that out make sure 
good. So we got plenty of fuel. It's uh, 100, 100 low lead. In the war, it wasn't low lead, it was 100 octane. Um, yeah, yeah, and on the P-51Ds and the Cs, they had, a, they had a fuselage fuel tank back here. One of the reasons why the P-51D is such a great airplane is because you can actually take that fuel tank out and put a jump seat back there. You can't do it in the C model because you've got a big uh, roll bar that's part of the structure. And uh, anyway, so when we had this airplane uh, taken up to Oshkosh, twice we won grand champion once i think about 1987 it got dinged in the hurricane we sent it back to cal pacific air motive that did my p51c they're doing my a model mustang as well they redid it we took the restoration to a higher level went back you got to be at least 10 years after and we won grand champion warbird again so this airplane might have been the only one at oshkosh that's won it twice so that's pretty cool needs a little bit of uh we need to touch up the paint this is basically from you know polishing the uh the airplane from time to time so anyway so right now we got the fuel tank out because we do a little bit of jump seats uh, you can actually see the uh, this is the radiator shutter door here and under here you can see that one right there that's actually for the oil cooler I'll show you that and that's what this big dog house on the bottom is for and when they uh, the North American designed this they designed it in a wind tunnel to where the air going in of course it's a radiator so it's cooling the oil, it's cooling the, uh, the coolant temp in the radiator uh, that cools the engine. And so you've got this hot exhaust coming out like jet thrust, okay? And they basically designed this in the wind tunnel at North American to where the scoop on the bottom, the thrust was overcoming the frontal drag of the, uh, of the, uh, of the scoop. So it's almost like it's not there. So that's, that's pretty cool. This little thing in the back here, this is where a bar can go through and you can actually lift the tail up if you're jacking up the, you know, so you get the tail wheel off the ground when you're doing gear retracks. Um, the control surfaces on the elevators on the D model, elevators are actually metal. On the P51C, they're uh, fabric, but on the rudder, on all of them, they're fabric. And you can see, now this one is an anti-servo tab. So you can see that if I put in left rudder it's actually pushing against it and it's holding it back uh, i'm not sure why that might be some sort of flutter issue but all these uh, uh control surfaces are counterweighted and that is definitely for flutter this is for for flutter here as well um, this is actually these this this particular airplane came out at the end of world war ii it was literally on a boat headed to new zealand when the war ended in crates with about i don't know 39 other ones. I think there was like 40 airplanes. They were going to New Zealand and they actually had this on there, I, b I believe, unless it was added later, but this was actually a tail radar warning system. So if somebody got in this cone of where somebody was behind you to shoot you, there would be a light that would flash up on the panel up on the top there next, next to the gun sight that uh, would let you know that uh, somebody's back there. So that's that. It's all looking pretty good. And uh, yeah, this would be where you would, if for some reason you wanted to, if the battery was lower, you wanted to start it with an external starter. That's where you would do that. That's a Venturi for something, probably draining something. I'm not sure. Um, not draining something, but just keep something from uh, keep it going overboard or something. Okay, check the fuel here pretty shiny day today it's been actually pretty rainy lately okay so we got plenty of fuel and because they just fueled it I'm gonna want to sump it that's why I've got this little thing with me now one thing I want to show you let me put the camera on Kermit check out if you can see it we actually, back in the mid to late 80s, when we restored this airplane, we really took the restoration of originality up to a completely new level. And this was one of the things that we did that we added. And uh, let me just set that there for now. 
So you can see we've got all the guns in. Obviously, they're just aluminum breeches. Uh, I think the barrels are real 50s, but the ATF takes a dim view these days of having 50 caliber active machine guns in your airplanes. Um, these are the ammo chutes. And as you can see, the uh, these two guns are fed out of, and I'll show you this here. Uh, let's see, I gotta pull that little handle over here. Hadn't loaded the guns in a while. We haven't shot a lot of ammunition lately. Let me set that down there. Yeah, so you can see that there's, you know, basically uh, all the ammo there. So this aft thing here feeds this one gun here, and that's why this gun is recessed. You can see that there. These two guns are fed out of this thing up here, which is a little bit thicker part of the wing. And if you look at the deal right here, you can kind of see how it's loaded, how many rounds there are and stuff, you know. So um, I can't remember, it's just about 600 rounds a minute. Center gun's got 270 rounds. So if you set it at 300, you know, in less than 30 seconds, you're out of freaking ammo if you held the trigger down. So let's get all this back here. So that was, you know, one of the things that we did that people weren't really doing back then. And uh, also here's the, the firing solenoids. They actually are what in the cockpit, when you pull the trigger, you can actually turn the switch on in the cockpit in this airplane. And when you pull the gun trigger, all these click. Of course, they don't click to anything, but you know, anyway, so pretty cool. We're very, very proud of this airplane. And like I said, it's got a really soft spot in my heart because it's been a big part of my early history of warbirds and stuff. Zeus fasteners. Okay, that's that. Flap, ailerons, all look good. Wing tip. Okay, first thing we want to do, we want to make sure we take the pedo cover off here. And this is for uh, the airspeed. Um, you know, the ram pressure goes in there and basically expands a bellows in the airspeed indicator and it's geared to the dial. So the more pressure, uh, the faster you're going. And uh, we put these on here in Florida and a lot of places too. You get these little mud daubers and they love to make nests there. And that is not a good thing if you want to have any airspeed. Um, leading edge looks all good. Get rid of the chocks. Um, and then down here, Again, we're looking for, um, you know, we're looking for any kind of leaks, checks in the tire, things like that. Now, this gear well is a little bit different. It's a landing gear thing, looking for leaks and stuff. And on these, uh, these rams here, this is actually the, the ram that runs the gear up and down. And very uh, early in some of the Mustang days, some of these tubes would break. And if for some reason, they actually broke it could jam against one of these ribs and you couldn't get the gear up or down regardless so uh, this is just a little bit of a Rube Goldberg add a spring there so if it does break it'll pop up and you can actually get the gear uh, gear down emergency um, and uh, the only other thing of course there's the up lock right there that would clip in there once it goes up the only other thing in here looks like a little hydraulic uh, oh, it's a, an accumulator actually and uh, this is the pressure gauge, it's supposed to be like 400 PSI. It's a little bit of an accumulator that acts as a dampening system in the hydraulic system, which runs at about, I think it's 1,000 PSI. Um, of course, there's the clamshell doors, and this is all connected through sequencing valves that, you know, make sure that the gear goes up before the clamshell goes up and all that stuff. So that's that. Now back here is the radiators. And if you look inside here, couple of things. First thing, the one down low there, that's the oil cooler down here. In the back there is the radiator for the coolant. And then I've got two, um, two little fuel, uh, that's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to get the thing out of here. Anyway, i got to drain the, there we go, to make sure that there's no water in the fuel. That looks all like fuel to me. Smells like fuel. I'll do this one over here. 
looks pretty good looks clear and it's blue which is good that's the color that they put the dye in there for 100 octane um, and then uh, just one other little fuel thing here that we checked and that is not that side but let me go up here first because this is another key thing we want to take out and that is the carburetor air duct and we put that up there so the mud daubers won't fill that up but you can get a bird's nest up there so that's uh something that we want to make sure is clear now we'll have to come back and get these later um, Anyway, so that's all good, and uh, you know, spinner, prop blades, all look good. The Mustang really isn't a problem with the deals, but if you tap it with a screwdriver, if there's a cracked exhaust stack, it goes clunk. Yeah, so those all look good, um, and uh, over here is the fuel strainer and this is where the fuel kind of filter is before it goes to the carburetor so there's actually one more one more little thing that we drain here okay and that all looks pretty good and it's stopped dripping Okay, that's that. I can get rid of this chalk, put my fuel screwdriver drainer here. That's in there. Okay, close this up because. This is the rainy season, and we try and keep all this as dry as we can. That's our little fuel tank there. I think it holds about 2,000 gallons. Um, yeah, so anyway, so everything looks good on the outside. Let me go ahead and put my little Kermit Cam helmet on, and we'll go maybe do some flying. Okay, so...